Okay, real quick stained glass tutorial because people are asking about this. I just have a simple image. It's totally and completely black. This is going to be the bars in the stained glass, not the actual glass. Sorry, that was a little confusing. So you can see this is literally just a black layer. There's nothing else to it, right? So if you go to our channels, open up the alpha, this is what the alpha looks like. Where you see white is where we're actually going to see the bars. I've gone ahead and saved this out. We're going to save this as an actual targa in here. We want to make sure that this alphas is turned on. This is important. Go ahead and save. And we're going to get this. We have to make sure that we're saving it at 32 bits. Yeah, I know this is fast. I'm going to go ahead and just save this and overwrite the thing that I've got. All right, let's jump into UEFN. We're going to go ahead and add it to this plane right here. And we're going to cover how I would actually set this up so that you can see both sides because currently you can't see the other side. All right, so let's go ahead and create a new material. Go ahead and open that up. Now inside of here, we need that texture. So let's go ahead and just grab that really quick. That one, open that up. Drag that one in. Okay, so now we'll take that RGB and we'll add it to the base color. We'll take our alpha and we'll actually set that to opacity mask. Make sure this is set to masked. There we go. Let's put this on a plane. So there's our stained glass, but we can't see it from the other side. So with this bad boy actually selected, what we want to do is come down here and click on this two-sided. Like that. Wait for it. And then we'll be able to see the other side as soon as it actually finishes its computing. So we'll go ahead and save that because I know it's going to do what we need it to do. All right, then we'll close that, and then we'll go ahead and apply it. So we'll grab that material, boom, put it on there. <laughs> Got the floor too, good times. So there we go. Now we can actually see this from both sides. So this is the actual metal pieces, not the actual glass. If you're going to do glass, you do actually need to make sure that your material is actually using the opacity so that we can get the light to actually pass through the actual glass. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. And to do that, let's at least go back to the very beginning inside of the actual texture. So here's my actual alpha. We're going to go ahead and mess with this. So let's go ahead and select all that, copy it. Let's go back into the layers. And we're going to go ahead and paste that into there, like so. And then we're going to go into our uh, adjustment layers down here. And we're going to go into our levels. And we're going to grab this one. And I'm going to take the black and I'm going to do this. I'm basically just making it gray, right? Because opacity is like 50%. Ah, let's go a little further with that, right? About there. Perfect. So we'll go ahead and save this out. Again, make sure it's a Targa. I'm going to make sure that's set up. And we're going to go ahead and do the same one. We'll overwrite it, save it. Yes, and 32. All right, so then let's go back over to the engine. Okay, so the first thing we can do is re-import this texture because I saved over it. So with it selected, come down here and click on the little browse. Right-click on that texture and say re-import. That will bring it in or bring in your new texture, whatever it is. And inside of this node, we need to set it from using opacity mask to opacity. So with it selected, we'll come down here to our blend mode and change this to translucent, like so. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take that RGB and drop it into the opacity. So now we have our black borders with a gray here in the middle. So right in here, whoops, right in here, we've got this as gray. That's awesome. Uh, we want to go ahead and change the color, though. So let's go ahead and bring in a color node. So hold three, left mouse click, we'll get this one. Double click on it. Grab purple. We like purple. So if I drag that in there, we get purple everywhere, but we don't want purple everywhere. We want it only in a couple of places. So we need to use a lerp node because we still have the alpha in here. So if we bring the alpha, whoop, use a linear interpolate. Do that. And let's go ahead and just drop that in there. So let's go ahead and take this color, run it into A. So if we preview this, see that we get white here, and then we get purple where we want it. So if we connect this, and stop previewing. We get something that looks like this, but we want black over that line, right? So in this case, if we set this to zero, boom, there we go, three notes. Now we have stained glass. We can change the color all day long without any problems. So we go ahead and save that, come back. Now we look at this, hey, now we actually have stained glass. You will notice we do not have a shadow though. That is a limitation of the way that this specific shader is built. And we're not gonna go into details on how to actually address that. There is plenty of documentation out there. So hopefully that helped.